Well, good morning everyone and welcome to IR Photo Tours. Today we're going to be talking with landscape guru Melvin Nicholson after this. <laughs> My name's Ian Robinson, and if you don't know, I've been a landscape photographer for the last 15 years, roughly, and um, these are some of the images I've done. This video is all about uh, meeting up with Melvin and spending um, some quality time with uh, the the master of landscape photography and uh, uh, Melvin Nicholson. It all came about, it was off the cuff, it all came about uh, at 10.30 in the morning where I messaged him. I've been following Melvin for quite a long time now, quite a couple, couple of years. Uh, and again, Melvin's sort of been following me as well. So it's, it's, uh, it's been quite nice. He's got some fantastic landscape photography. He's done extremely well with that. Um, he's been incredibly lucky with some of his um, photography with his uh, fog bow. I don't know whether any, every, anyone or everyone, anyone uh, knows Melvin Nicholson. He's done some amazing photography. He's, he's on the road 24-7 uh, really. Um, so if, if anyone's going to get some cracking images, he certainly is because that is persistence for you. I mean, uh, now Melvin has been on the road for the last month or so and uh anyway he came to visit us on in norfolk and me being a local norfolk guy um i messaged him about half 10 in the morning uh, to see if he would like to meet up uh something that i've wanted to do uh, for a long time is meet uh melvin and uh yeah, finally I got my ch chance really. So he said, yeah, yeah, brilliant, that'd be fantastic. Are you bringing the bus? I said, yep, I'll bring the bus and I'll, I'll, I'll ferry you around and chauffeur you around Norfolk. And I'll show you a few places that I know of. Um, I mean, there are many, but to uh, to show you, to show Melvin every place would, well, I take it take a long 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 time so uh, anyway I only had an afternoon with him I took my lovely Dougals with me and uh, we just spent the uh, a quality afternoon this is the video to that quality afternoon and uh, I'll let you watch it uh, Melvin Melvin the master of landscape photography doing his stuff and teaching us a bit more about What have you got now then, Melvin, as in camera? So I've got the R5. Ah, R5. Yeah. Ah, <laughs> oh, yeah. nice camera. 45 bad. megapixel. 45 megapixel. Yeah. In all, in all their, in all their uh, glory. Lovely. And, um... So how are you finding... Uh, it's a lot of money now. How are you finding uh, the Norfolk Broads then? <laughs> Cold. Cold. Overcast, <laughs> wet, windy. So not impressed so far, or are you? <laughs> Where's the yeah. colour? Yes. Where's the colour? Monday morning. Yes, well, the colour tends to disappear about two o'clock in the afternoon, doesn't it? <laughs> to be honest, I think it disappeared from about yeah. 5 a.m. to about 10 p.m. Yeah, yeah. All Granted. Day. Oh my yeah, you, you've picked the wrong time, I think. The potential? <laughs> yeah, the potential is there. Is there. Yeah, and that's the frustrating thing. When you don't get the yeah, weather yeah. and the light, the potential, on beautiful uh, scenes like this, 
Yeah. yeah. But you need the lines. You do, don't you? So I'm just going to hang 100%. around for about six months until I do. <laughs> <laughs> what, on this spot? <laughs> Yeah, yeah it's, it's a beautiful house, a boathouse. Yeah, it is. It's, it's, it's a nice, it's a nice image. But I wonder. I think that one's an early morning image, Melvin. That one. This one. Yeah. Look, facing that way. That's that's your early morning. You get your sunrise. Yeah. And then, of course, that way to Turf Fen. Turf Fen, you've got sunset, which is nice. You got the best of both worlds. Yes, yes, definitely. Although you probably wouldn't want to hang around all day <laughs> at this one spot for, t well, for sunset. Do, do but, sunset. Yeah. Sleep in the car. Yeah. Sunrise. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good. That's a good option. Fit, fit the shortest period. Yeah. Definitely. <laughs> Big wave for a little while. No. And then you know. And then all of a sudden you'll get one. It won't last when, it? When, when, when you're not ready. <laughs> oh look, this this one's a big one. You think that, but sometimes they can. Ooh. Oh yeah. Sometimes oh. they can wash themselves out. Yeah, right? that's true. They hit. So what are you looking for? You're looking for a background uh, wave coming in oh. and also this crashing, yeah. I want, I want whites here. Yeah. So it isolates the rocks. Yeah. And then at the same time, I want to get a half a second. Shot yeah. of the rollers in the background, so you've got drama in the background, and you've got the rocks isolated with the uh, groin coming in from the bottom left. Okay, now, if that doesn't work, I'll recompose and I'll just use the rocks as the base of my image and not the concrete in front. So, there's uh, but now that we're at very high tide, that's a big wave. Oh, so, so this is what we want. So, we want the white, but there's not enough white. Getting movement in the water, but quite often you get two or three waves together, some really big waves. So you tend to come on a, a bit of a bounce, really. Patience, I suppose. Yeah. photography you never quite know what it's going to do but one thing you do have to be uh, mindful of is to always expect the unexpected in the ocean and in the, of course in Blackpool in the winter the waves you see there are, are tremendous yeah they're absolutely fierce so this wall behind you that curved wall I'd say in Blackpool that's probably twice the height of that <laughs> it's <laughs> when you get that North Atlantic Waves rushing in. Keep your filters clean. Keep them covered from the sea spray. Yeah, that's good. Good advice. It says you have to keep cleaning them, then. Yeah. Just keep it covered until the moment. You would have thought they would have come up with an invention, wouldn't you? Where, where they'd have a cap or something. Wouldn't you? Don't you think? Yeah. Maybe you should invent one, Melvin. <laughs> 
make a lot of money on it. This time next year it could be a million Yeah, million. exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like the remains of uh, vanilla ice cream that's gone yeah. soft. That's <laughs> melted. Yeah. Mr Whippy, I've got to say that cloud is starting to look now quite nice actually. Oh, here we go. Whee! Did you get it? Yeah. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Oh, wow. Well, that's angry. Look at that. <laughs> that's great. I'd like to see the picture of that, Melvin. Yeah. yeah. Now, for all you viewers out there, we have, you know, you might be looking at this thinking, well, if that tide comes in anymore, where are they going? I can tell you now. <laughs> Um, Melvin might be doing that, but I'll be doing that. <laughs> I'll be going up there. <laughs> Always have a, an escape. Absolutely. The moral of the story. <laughs> I want to keep the texture in the water. You got half a second. That's all I've got. Yeah. So that I keep the, fun, the form and the function and the texture in the water. So when we get a when we get a big wave hit the end of the groin and it and it uh, explodes. That's really what we're after. So we're shooting uh, F10, ISO 200, half a second, at 60 mil, full frame, with a six stop case ND filter. So um, if I drop down from 200 ISO to 100, you'd be looking at one second exposure which is a little too long for me but half a second is just about right you got there you get a lot of the uh, a lot of the energy when the water hits and dissipates it's really what you're after It's not a good one. Yes. But they build and they build. So if you miss the first one, there's a good chance you'll get it in the second. Do you still like your tethered um, remote? It's the only way to go. Yeah, it is, isn't it? The battery's no good. No. It's basically powers off. I don't uh, think the phone is at the app either, because uh, I think it's delayed, or it can be delayed. Yeah, I'm not big on the, can the Canon app uh, for live viewing, for shooting, it's not great. No. It's quite complicated to set up and connect to your camera as it well. It is, yeah, and they should have made that easier. Yeah, there should be a button on the, uh, should be a simple one step button on the camera. Yeah. Activate the app and away you go, but it's so long winded, I just don't use it. The problem is you need to use it often to remember how to use it. Yeah. Otherwise you forget. I agree. And that's the issue. If anything, I have that problem. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> as you get older, your memory's not as good, and no. that should be a lot easier. It should be a lot easier, but, but it really isn't. So you can do with making some some big uh, big changes. To that. Yeah, definitely. Look at this There's potential with it. Oh yes. So you want it where it crashes down and then spreads out. Spreads out over yeah. the groin. I imagine you've got some quite nice images there. The light's not the light, amazing. The but light's great for this. Um, yeah. you, don't want it, you don't want it bright. No. You don't that, want the highlights burnt out. There'll be a lot of highlights with all this white. Yeah. So actually this is... Uh, Perfect. This is about as good as it gets, actually. Yeah. You see, for this kind of photography, just got to wait for him to build again. So it's not so much of a failure then coming to Norfolk. <laughs> No. Well, see, now we're That's... finding without the rain, you can shoot with the yeah, rain. Yeah, definitely. It's a killer. Yeah. And there's no one. The wind's fine today. So I don't mind grey over overcast skies. You just got to match up the genre of photography to the conditions that you've got. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's good. Good point, here we actually. Go, here we go. Bang. Oh, yes. Oh, fantastic. Now that's drama right there. So one of the things you've got to remember to do is to take several kinds of compositions uh, rather than going away with just one or two. Yeah. You really want to maximise it. Um, well, especially as you're uh, only here for a little while, really. Yeah. Well, I don't want to 
to my uh, weather app, Aki Weather. And the handy thing with that app is it will tell you exactly when the rain is going to start. And normally it's very, very accurate. Yeah. So if it says 10 minutes, it gives you enough time to get back to the car. It's important. So are we okay at the moment? Rain's starting in 55 apparently. Okay. And that, is that accurate, is it? Well, generally, yeah. Yeah. It's got this listed as upper street, so yeah, that's the, the GPS coordinates it's got. Uh, Yeah, it's fine. If you're at Cromer right now, you'd be getting wet. Yeah. It also gives you the direction of the wind, which is really, really handy. Uh, if you're not quite sure which oh, direction yeah, it's, it's coming amazing. in. So even if it, even so it's if, live. Yeah, so even if you're clear yeah. of, of rain, at least you know in what direction the wind's coming in. The rest, yeah. of, the rest of the country's looking... Pretty good. Yeah, excellent. I think oh. you're in the wrong part, mate. <laughs> Generally and this is Melvin Nicholson, just in case you don't know. Um, <laughs> Red jacket is the Oh yes. Howdy all. And I'm I'm Ian Robinson doing the filming if for a change. Know, and if you don't know who Ian is, <laughs> we're both in trouble. Oh no. So I'm just looking now at um, any lightning storms. They're all sort of designated to uh, northern mainland uh, Europe. Is that on the same map, Melvin? No, that is with. Um, so it's another, a different map, uh, app. Sorry. Yeah, so I think that's called Lightning something or other. Um, I have a Lightning yeah, one. In fact, I have four of them here. But so what one's? Oh, I've got that one, the yellow one. I've got the yellow one. Is that one? Yeah, that's the one I have. Yeah, that's quite is good. Is that accurate? It will tend, yeah, but that that will tend to give you um, yellow and red dots. So red dots are dead uh, strikes. And the yellow ones are very much live. Oh, okay, yeah. So they break it down into coloured dots. Oh, okay. And then they also tell you the uh, the number of strikes in that area. Oh, right. So that, that, which geez. is quite handy. So two hundred strikes there. Yeah. Wow. But but if everything's coming west. Yeah. Yeah, we're not likely to get it. No, in. no. In those really hot, sticky summer days, to have those amazing yeah. thunderstorms. That's really what you need. But you got so you got uh, you got some amazing shots at Shingle Street. Yeah, I reckon so, I got two or three. Including some with uh, one with Fort Lightning. Yeah. Amazing. What when when did you come to Norfolk, uh, Melvin? Or oh, well, South, um, Suffolk and Norfolk, should I say? Probably about five days ago. Four oh, days right. ago. Okay. Uh, maybe five days ago, six days ago. Yeah. All the days roll into one when you're yeah. on a big trip. <laughs> uh, Felix though surprised me. Um, yeah. yeah. Felix. In, in what way? Well, quite often, whenever you turn up to a place that you've never been to before, you either take to it or you don't. Yeah. Um, and sometimes you just don't seem to uh, to quite perhaps feel something for a particular place for whatever yeah. reason. Sometimes you can roll into a place like Felixstone, not really expecting anything, and yet find that it gives you lots of different opportunities, sunrise, yeah. sunset, uh, which is kind of unusual on the East Coast to be able to shoot both. But the way in which it, um, you know, it, it obviously has the port area in the south, and it comes up the East Coast, gives you lots of flexibility. Mm -hmm. And lots of subjects to shoot. You know, you got Land Guard, uh, Cobalt Point. Cobalt uh, Point, yeah, yeah, we call that the Dragon's yeah, Tail. Yeah. 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 <laughs> we went there on some, a lovely sunrise morning, but the water wasn't quite high enough to separate, you know. Yeah. So the problem is, if you live locally, you can go back and go back, return yeah. and get the shot that you want. But if you're passing through for two or three days, you get what you're given. Yeah. Um, you know, and, yeah. uh, and, and that can be a real struggle. I'm quite frustrating because you see the potential yeah. in a place, but you know that you've just not quite got the right conditions. I get that. Totally get that. Saying that, one of the reasons why I travel so much and that I like to visit new places is that from a visual stimulation point of view, you're on overload when you first arrive, anywhere fresh. Yeah, um, you are, yeah. And, 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 and I like that sort of adrenaline that you get and that excitement yeah. in uh, having to assess a place rather quickly take advantage of the conditions yeah and uh, it gets my mind more active it puts it into overdrive uh, and I quite like that if you do keep going back to the same places all the time you become lazy and, yeah you know I think uh, okay. you've got to know how how you react as a photographer I think you can learn the art of photography and composition and everything else I think one of the hardest things to learn about certainly landscape photography 
is um, is kind of why you do it and mm. what do you get from it and what do you need to do to get from it what you need and that's that buzz yeah and that takes yeah well, that takes time to figure out but once you've uh, once you've gone down a certain path I specialised in landscapes about seven eight years ago um, when I turned pro and never looked back but this is obviously coastal landscapes sometimes cityscapes as well yeah um, definitely uh, float my boat hmm. absolutely well I sound I can hear the passion in your voice with that <laughs> yeah which yeah. is good it's also partial fear that I might yeah. drown but <laughs> 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 no. well, I, think, uh, I think we're done here now yeah absolutely I think the car park uh, car park meter is running. Oh yes, yes, we've only got an hour in the car. <laughs> yeah, that'll be so. that'll be all right. So where are we going next? Go to uh, we go to Haysburg, shall we, Melvin? Yeah, yeah Happysburg. Let's get to Happysburg. Happysburg? Oh, sorry, Happysburg for you unlocal people. It's the bird that's happy. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're going to Happysburg, guys. Happysburg. Yay! So we're now at uh, Haysburg. Happysburg. Uh, oh, sorry, Happysburg. Sorry, I do apologise. <laughs> you locals don't know how to pronounce anything. <laughs> you spotted this, you love the uh, dart behind there, don't you? And the... Yeah, so as, as we were coming up, I yeah. noticed that the darkest section of the sky that touches land, where the rain is coming from, is smack bang behind the lighthouse. So what you want is you want as dark a sky as possible set against uh, a bright object. Uh, I was at Shingle Street, uh, a couple of days ago, three, four days ago, where we had a massive thunderstorm come through. And again, I placed the white cottages, the four white coastal cottages, directly in front of the section of the storm that had actually hit sort of land. So they were accentuating, the dark clouds were accentuating the, the really bright um, building. Obviously here, half the lighthouse is covered in a deep red. So the white has to stand out even more. But as we've, as we've been here now two minutes, with the sky going from right to left, it's already now looking unbalanced. So we've now got to go down, probably to the end of this gate, uh, this fence line here, to try and reposition the dark skies behind the lighthouse. Yep. Go that usual trick with putting your hands in front of the camera. It is. <laughs> Excellent as bookmarks. Oh, yes. When you're scanning your images sometime later, you never quite remember. So, what lens have you got on there? This is an RF 2470 2.8. I'm waiting for the Canon to release the F4 version. I don't really need a 2.8, certainly in landscaping. No. Uh, I, don't, I, don't, I don't need the weight or the extra expense, to be fair. No. And. Uh, yeah, so I'm just going to place uh, place the grid on a on a third rule, and then bring down the pillbox. I place it on about a third from the top, so it's got a third sky and two thirds land. Because the grass is quite interesting, but you have to up oh, your f-stop. I'm going f14, the aperture, and I'll focus some way into the scene. Then I will check. But the reality is, you probably want everything. You can go one or two ways here. You can uh, again focus that from from the front to the back. So we'll do that. So we'll uh, at f14. We'll go in really quite. Uh, probably go a couple of feet out. That's one shot. And the advantage of touch screen is that it's very quick to set up. And the uh, in the fourth shot. Okay, that's cool. Or you can go very, very shallow. So this is where a 2.8 can come in handy. 2.8, and you focus on the pillbox and shoot it, and then you can get some beautiful out of focus grass if you get low down, and you place the pillbox in the distance. For those of you wondering about my my head, I use a geared head, so I uh, I have two knobs. So this is an Arca Swiss D4 yep. geared head with the classic screw. Don't go for the flip lock, they're made out of plastic, they're no good. So this is an old traditional, very very simple Arca plate on a three-legged thing L bracket. 
and you just simply screw it in and it absolutely clamps fantastically well and nice. it's a tight um, so I get it roughly into position and then I'm uh, if I then want to get into position really quickly then all I've got to do is get it roughly lined up and then clamp it and then just use the two round knobs which are filled uh, rubberized as well and uh, then you can get it lined up on the lighthouse supremely quickly and they're much much faster than a ball head your rotation is just free flow so you don't really uh, once you get it roughly in position you clamp you don't really need your rotation to be geared you but you do need your leveler your horizontal and you need your pitch in your yaw but again you've got these two teardrop knobs which I never really use and they're a quick release which allow you then to use it like a ball head if you really want to but I never see the point so I never use them but okay. it's there if you want it but cool. it's compact it's the size of a ball head 751 grams a thousand quid it's pure pure precision engineering from the Swiss as you'd expect but for a thousand quid I'd expect somebody to come out and take the photo for me. <laughs> if it's your, uh, if it's your livelihood, yeah. Um, the difference between which it is yours, of course. It is. I mean, but it, it's the longevity yeah. of equipment, and um, this is why you spend good money on equipment because it lasts. Yeah. Uh, other equipment at a, at a far lesser price point will do the job, but only for a period of time. Yeah. And if you're using it most days, and you're throwing it around, and you, you know, I'm not, I'm not precious about my equipment. Um, no, they're workhorses, aren't they? They're just tools. I, yeah, I don't, yeah. I don't get excited about a Canon or about any camera. I mean, the R5, it's a lovely camera. There's no doubt, but it's just a camera. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, I was quite glad to get my hands on one, but um, I, it doesn't make you a better photographer. It actually makes you, it makes it an easier task to get something that you want. Mm, quite yeah. possibly. Yeah. Um, because you were talking today about filters, and I said, oh, you're not using a half grady. Well. What was your answer? I don't tend to use the, the, the grads as much as I used to. No. You know, I've got a full complement of, I've got 10 case glass uh, filters in here. Yeah. From three stop to six to, to 10. Yeah. I have a 16 stop in my other, in the, in the other pouch. And then I've got a plethora of, uh, of grads. Yeah. Uh, so there's 10 filters in there, three in the other, two polarizers and two holders. It's about two grands worth of filters, just yeah. in filters. Yeah. But I have to say, I'm using them probably less and less because the Canon has better dynamic range. Yeah, definitely. If I'm, if I'm sitting up and waiting for about half an hour to get the shot, I will. But if I'm using, the, if I'm, you know, if I'm taking quick shots and running, I'll quite often not bother to be honest with you. Yeah. But uh, but there you go. But but filters are one of those things that you, if you really need them, you need to have them. Yeah. But you might just not use them as often. A polarizer, you'll never substitute a polarizer. No. Well, I was in. Uh, I've got a blog on my website. And uh, it covers a waterfall I shot in uh, the Great Otway Range in the uh, National Park in Australia, in Victoria. And I got to the uh, got to the waterfall. There was beautiful logs that had fallen, uh, and just huge fern leaves everywhere. <clears throat> Very tropical. But the amount of moisture that was on them was overwhelming. As soon as you put a polarizer on, there's a before and after shot. The polarizer yeah. just removes every ounce All the of glare. white light. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And it makes the image lush vibrant yeah it changes the image and that's probably about the best image i could find to demonstrate the benefits of a polarizer so if you only on had one there. filter then that'd be the polarizer do you think polarizer because you, you just can't you can't beat it you, well you can't replace it no. with anything else you can't substitute it there's nothing that will get rid of the white glare on on the surface uh from from the light um you've got to have a polarizer just a question yeah. that um that some of my viewers might want answered actually is is uh Firstly, differences between a circular polarizer and a, a and a standard polarizer filter. Square one. Sorry. But you can get square. Yeah, polarizer. square one. Mm. The problem is with the square polarizer, a polarizer will only work at a certain angle. Yeah. And so, if you place a square piece of glass polarizer into, and they're quite unconventional and they're not very popular, but if you place um, in a holder a square polarizer and you need to place that polarizer at a diagonal angle in order for it to work. Yeah. But then you have a graduated filter in. Then yeah. the graduated filter needs to remain horizontal in the main. Mm. And but your polarizer is going to be at this angle. Yeah. And so if you then rotate Creating to problems. serve the polarizer well, the, your grad will be like this. So yeah, it, it doesn't work. Yeah. That's why you should always have a, a circular polarizer 
because then that doesn't affect the positioning mm. of your your graduated filters now the, another question that i keep hearing a lot about which i kind of know anyway but um <laughs> the circular polarizer um people yeah, they say well it only really works at 90 degrees to the sun mm. uh, um uh, well tell, tell me all answer that question to for me melvin to, 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 to most to, to all intent it, it it's a, it's at its most effective. Yes, with the sun at ninety degrees. Agreed. Outside, isn't yes, it? but it's not. Uh, it doesn't only work like the one that. Time, does it? Yeah, but the one time that I actually used it, that kind of goes against that. Mm -hmm. Was when I was in, um, I was in Glencoe. Well, I was in Rannoch Moor. Right. In November twenty sixteen, and I was shooting a white rainbow mm -hmm. over a tree with snow. Not not that famous fog bow you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that image. <laughs> yeah. That beautiful image um, <laughs> well, it's lovely beautiful uh, yeah i was kind of lucky with that image to be mm. fair the, the right conditions and the right but we are um but uh with the sun was rising behind yeah behind me mm -hmm. and rainbows always appear opposite to the sun yeah so if you have a shower you always look where the sun's going to be the rainbow's going to be opposite yeah and uh, so what happened there was as soon as the fog bow appeared the white rainbow appeared yeah and it was white because the water droplets in the rainbow are so small that color can't pass through them Okay. But as a consequence, one of the most uh, famous um, features of a fog bow is the dark line underneath it right. that runs on the underside of the of the, the white arch. That can only really be brought out by a, um, a polarizer. And we had a bit of blue sky above centrally positioned over the fog bow. So by placing the polarizer, that brought out the blue mm -hmm. and it em emphasized the black or the darker line underneath the fog bow. So it made it more defined. And the fog bow obviously then hit the ground on both sides as well so you didn't need to have to use a polarizer in that instance with the sun either side of you that worked because the sun was behind you mm -hmm. and for whatever reason it did work yeah. but ordinarily you'd shoot you'd, you'd use it if the sun was either side uh of you they tend to be more effective use it for lakes as well to to get through and yeah. see the rocks below and yeah. stuff I mean, like that Quite often with the polarizer. Again, you don't need you don't need the sun for that either, really, do you? No, actually, you're probably better off not having it quite often. Yeah. But if if, um, if the polarizer is a bit too strong on the sky, and it can be sometimes, mm -hmm. I'll take a shot for the water using the polarizer to get rid of the white reflection. Yeah. And then I'll take another shot without the polarizer for the sky, and I'll merge the two. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, in trying to get the water perfect, you can slightly overemphasize a blue sky with white clouds. Yes, agree. You can end up with yeah. several areas or one area of your image, your sky being too heavy set. And very middle. dark as well. Yeah. yeah and so if you dark. want even light, if, if you want even light, <laughs> then uh, then you're better off not polarizing the sky. He's getting, he's getting a bit. Um, uh, <laughs> getting bored now. Bored. Yes. So I think um, I'm going to conclude the day with Melvin Nicholson here. Um, thank you, Melvin, for you're inviting welcome, me man. along. Well, thanks for uh, and, thanks for chauff chauffeuring me around and uh, showing oh, you're me welcome. around uh, two or three beautiful places in Norfolk. Wow, well, us Norfolk people are very friendly people, you know. If only I live close, <laughs> then you'd be worried. Oh, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, we got we got something in common. <laughs> <laughs> I love of landscape photography. Yes, <laughs> so there you go. Well, <laughs> well, thank you very much, and uh, okay, it has been a lovely old job. Yeah.